So what does it mean to have a database? Well, if we use this graphic right here, we can just make the assumption this is what a database kind of looks like. Uh, but what does this mean? Well, it has the same kind of idea uh, that something like Excel had, except for it's a little different. Uh, we like to think of it as a collection of data. I know that seems kind of generic, but let's think about a few different companies, for example, like Twitter, Amazon, and Google. Well, Twitter, uh, you know, if you think about Twitter, uh, if you have a Twitter, when you signed up for it, you had to input maybe your email address, your nickname or your Twitter name, however you want to kind of consider that. You had to give it a password. And then you have posts or tweets, if you will. And then finally, you also uh, have friends as well, who you follow followers. All of those things are being stored somewhere for your account and then your friend's account and then for everyone's account. Well, then let's look at something like Amazon. Amazon, again, the same kind of concept. It needs to store something like your email, your password, but then it also probably needs something like your address, your city, your state, and then maybe your credit card number. Uh, again, you know that's where the uh, one-click uh, shipping kind of comes in. It'll immediately uh, buy it and start shipping it to you. Well, okay, those were for more us. These guys right here, these are for us. But what about kind of uh, the world? And that's where something like Google can come into play. If you kind of think about what Google is, it's a search engine. Search engine but it still has to utilize a database. Uh, what Google does is it'll go through every web page, so it has to uh, have everyone's web address. It probably has to find the contents of that page. And one of the things it'll do is if it finds a uh, link, a hyperlink, it'll go to those pages as well. So uh, these are things that it might store for uh, any given web page, such as Amazon or Twitter. Now, why does it do these types of things? Well, what this allows for us to do is now uh, take this data and sort of connect it together. Again, Google, for example, Google is storing this data so that it might do some analysis on it. For example, let's say for uh, our sake, we go to a site like Reddit. Now, Reddit is just a site aggregator. It just collects data from other websites, but this guy has a lot of links. So what does Google do? Well, Google, for example, is going to go to Reddit and it's going to see that, oh, Reddit has a bunch of links. So what's it going to do? Well, it's going to go to every single one of those links and find out what the uh, contents on that page is. Contents. All of that data then is going to get stored. Uh, each one of these also has a web address. Each one of these has links. That in turn goes to Google's database and gets stored. You can also think of this like your bank account. Your bank account, for example, uh, has your uh, account ID, your PIN, your uh, balance, and if you're so lucky, it might have a little interest rate going on for your balance. If you've got a savings account, for example, you get a, uh, maybe like three cents every month uh, for just having money in there. Well, these things need to be stored somewhere because how we sort of, sort of break this down is it turns a little bit into like a table 
we start to break it down in the same structure. Let's take for example, let's take for example, a phone book. Well, a phone book, again, this sort of looks the exact same as how we would represent data inside of Microsoft Excel. It looks like a table, but we have a few new words that we break in. For example, let me just clean this up a little bit. There we are. For example, again, if it's a phone book, I probably have a name that I want to store uh, for there. And it might not be the person's real name if you have uh, quirky little nicknames for everybody. You know, that's one thing that I would want to store inside of there. Now, I probably also, because I'm dealing with a phone book, I probably want to also store their phone number. But then I would also, because we're in the technological era, you know, I might also want to store their email address. Now, we're going to go with a very robust uh, phone book because now that I've got these few things, I might also want to store something like uh, their date of birth. That way, you know, I get a little reminder when their date of birth happens that, hey, this is uh, so-and-so's birthday. Wish them a happy birthday. Now, we'll keep on going with this same kind of concept. Maybe I happen to know, um, you know, if they have an address, you know, I, I need to uh, go hang out with them. I need to send them something. So I, I might want to store their address as well. Well, each one of these things that I've just written out here, these, they're no longer known as columns like we learned inside of Excel and Word when we dealt with a table. They're slightly different. These are known as fields, fields. And then we also have entries. So say for example, I'm in your phone book and I'll change colors for that. Let me uh, clean that up to maybe a red. I'm in your phone book, and here's my number, uh, 9362774. Uh, uh, a Guida, I wrote this way too tiny, at cfcc.edu. Uh, my date of birth, uh, there, there. And then, say for example, you also in turn have your uh, friend Sarah. Sarah, uh, you've got her number, uh, 8675309. You've got her email, her date of birth, her address. And then you've also got, say, Billy. You've got all of his information. And then just to round it up, you've got Tina and all of her information. Now, each one of these that I've put in, each one of these guys right here, these are known as records. And every time I want to put in a new record, uh, I basically would insert it into my phone book uh, table. This is still referred to as a table, but just what we refer to the individual kind of parts of it are different. Again, this is no longer a column. This is now known as a field. And the reason why is because there is no instinct order, uh, instinctive order to it. Yeah, name is here, but name could be here, and it wouldn't matter. Uh, but that's where those things can come into play. So to keep on going with this now, we start to get into uh, different data types. I can look at each one of these fields, for example, and I can actually uh, give them a specific type of data to put in. Now, say for example, name. Well, names can store text. Now, what does it mean to have text? Well, it's letters. It's actually numbers. Numbers can be considered text too. What if I have a bunch of friends named Billy and I want to say Billy 1, Billy 2, uh, you know, guy from bar 3, you know, or punctuation. I can actually put in punctuation marks 
And that way, if I wanted to say something like Adam G, period, I could. Then we get into, uh, say, you know, number, since we're dealing with a bunch of numbers, but we're not doing necessarily math, that's probably also text. Email, same kind of concept. You notice how that's got an at symbol in it and a period, so all right. Now, date of birth. This is where things actually sort of change a little bit. This is actually going to be considered what's known as a date time data type. And sort of just like we saw inside of Excel, it's got a specific format to it. So, for example, my birthday, 11-22-84, this is getting stored not as text, not as numbers and slashes, but it's actually being stored as a date. Now, a date, again, is just numbers specifically formatted in a given way. And again, we can see address probably would be text as well. Now, what if I just happen to include another little field here that we'll call, I don't know, um, ID. Now, we always, this is actually an interesting thing. ID, even though it doesn't sound like much, uh, think about your student ID number. You have this number. Well, it doesn't have letters in it. It doesn't have symbols. It has 03670035. Well, that I don't need to store as a text. I don't need to store it as a date. I would actually store that as a number. Now, why? Well, if we can think about this for a second, maybe if I am doing this number system, I want to give, uh, for example, Sarah uh, the next number in the list. So in this case, uh, 0367035, 0367036. I'm incrementing. And then I go to Billy, and well, he gets the next one, 0367037, and then Tina, 0367038. By being a number, it allows me to do mathematical equations to it. Again, let's think about it in this sense. Maybe, maybe instead of a phone book, we're now dealing with some accounts. Maybe I'm a bookkeeper or I'm a guy who people owe a lot of money to. What I can currently expand on this is maybe creating a new record that we'll call uh, balance. How much somebody owes me. And again, because I'm me, I don't owe you Jack. But Sarah, Sarah, hey, you know, I loaned Sarah $20 uh, last week, so she owes me 20 bucks. Billy, Billy uh, is a deadbeat and he never pays and he owes me 100 bucks. Tina, Tina is actually good. I, I, I spotted her a five. Uh, actually, let's say I owe Tina money. You know, I actually have an outstanding balance with Tina. Instead of uh, Tina owing me money, I owe Tina money. Now, this, this is still a number, but this is considered a currency data type because, again, it's uh, math, it's numerical values, but in that sort of dollar sense. So we can take all these things together and now you can see we can start to uh, organize our data and have it in a way that allows us to now uh, research it, look it up, and in a second we'll talk about making queries to it.